had a few people ask me now what I use for trading or what sort of hardware they should be getting. Now, yes, you can go and look up videos on computer hardware. This one we're going to be focusing on why each part has been selected, keeping trading and that usage in mind. So first we're going to discuss the parts and why we chose them and then I will show you more of the machine and how it kind of gets all put together. So we did hand pick all these parts but don't be afraid to put it all together yourself. All computer parts these days really only fit into one other spot or plug into one other thing so it's really easy without messing it up. I was able to order all these parts off Amazon but feel free to shop around. There are no affiliate links in here so don't think that there's any sort of bias. I ordered them off Amazon primarily because it's a, a decent selection, decent price, that sort of thing, convenience, purpose. So it doesn't matter if you have a PC or a Mac, you want your machine to be cool. And the reason why we selected this case is because it will help us do that. A cooler case will help make a computer more stable. You'll have less crashes. Sometimes you have crashes and you don't know why and nothing gets recorded because it's just like the power is being cut uh, essentially. So we want to make sure that our machine is going to stay very cold uh, and cool and have that airflow. So that is going to contribute to the selection of this case. We also have a video card that is massive. It's almost like a foot long. So we want to be able to make sure we have more than enough room to fit that video card as well as our heat sink is going to be quite big uh, because of course we want to cool the system down. So all that is going to require a full size case. The next thing that you're going to want to install is a power supply. We're going to be looking at an 850 watt. You can go up to a thousand or there's even 1600 watts and there's they're still only a, a few hundred bucks. The 850 will do. Uh, I wouldn't go any lower than that because with the video card you'll probably want something of this size uh, and it will allow you to upgrade to some extent as well. Now we're not using a ton of power in the system because a lot of the components are pretty simple and there, there isn't a ton of them. Uh, so just stick with an 850 or above and you'll be fine. So the motherboard I got was the Asus Prime 370. This is the 390. This is the next one that's out. Um, when I built my computer about a year ago, it was the, the new one at the time, and they since obviously discontinued it. And now the 390 is going to fit the, the processor that we're going to show you. I got the uh, one that was last year's model, and I'm going to show you this year's model. So it all fits together. Uh, so this is the motherboard that you'd want. Uh, it's the same price as roughly what the 370 was when it came out. Um, so you can f try to find an old version of it and go with a, a cheaper CPU. I'll show you that as an option. Or this is the one that I'd probably pick up now, which is the 390 with the current CPU. So um, yeah, if you have any questions with this one or the 370, let me know in the comments. Uh, otherwise, uh, this will be your selection that will fit your uh, CPU as well as give you enough uh, RAM slots uh, to hold the 64 gigs that we'll talk about and it holds the M2 hard drive as well uh, two of them So the hard drives I picked up are the Samsung 970 EVOS now I got two of these but you only really need to get one I wanted to get two just so I can keep my reads and writes uh, separate for high intensity applications so if that's not something that you really need uh, which you don't need to have. Uh, primarily the reason I got it was for doing these YouTube videos. I can render and read off one and then render the output to another and it just makes that whole process a lot quicker. So you really only need to get one. Uh, it's a Samsung 970 Evo and uh, I wouldn't go for the Pro model just because it's probably not worth the performance upgrade. So the CPU I got is the i7-8700K. Now this is very different than other i7s because in the future if you needed to you can overclock it. What I would be looking at right now if I were you in building the system with the new motherboard, the 390, is getting the i9, the 9900K. Okay, now this is going to be what basically controls uh, the rest of the parts that we discussed. So you don't really want to go cheap on the CPU and have it be a bottleneck so all your other devices grind to a halt. So we need to have something decent without breaking the bank and that's where the i9-9900K comes in. It's also a very easily overclockable CPU so even if you haven't done anything 
uh, to do with uh, machines and overclocking. Uh, what systems allow you to do these days, it's pretty easy without getting yourself into trouble. Uh, back in the day, it was a bit of a different story. But if you did want to give your performance uh, an increased boost, if you found out your computer was running a little sluggish, uh, overclocking this chip is pretty easy and it will give you that extra performance. Uh, you'll also notice that we have a heatsink pick, uh, picked out that uh, will definitely allow you to uh, overclock the, the CPU quite a bit. Okay, so with a heatsink and a fan, the fan's attached to the heatsink, it's going to blow that heat out. Uh, so it lifts that heat from the CPU out through the fan and outside the system. And because you're going to be sitting at your computer trading a lot, you're probably not going to want this loud fan. So we specifically picked this heatsink because one, it's going to support the CPU and it's going to be powerful enough. And two, it's going to be extremely quiet for when you're working around the machine. So for the RAM, I had four slots. Um, so I wanted to put 64 gigs in there of RAM. You could go up to 128. I didn't see the added benefit of that right now with uh, the cost of how much RAM is. But the 64 was good enough. And it will make uh, your NinjaTrader 8 kind of run like butter, uh, nice and smooth. Everything kind of flows well. Don't really have any uh, issues with performance. Um, if you go down to 32 and you start doing a lot of scanning and more heavy usage, you might wish you had the 64. So I would go for the 64. I don't think the 128 is worth the benefits, um, but uh, at least not at this point. Um, although if you did want to upgrade in the future, the board supports it. You can always remove the 64 gigs and buy the 128. So now for the video card, we did pick the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. Now there are newer models out, but if you're able to find it, it's probably a decent price point. Uh, they've come down a few hundred bucks since uh, they were originally released, and uh, it needs it needs the big full size tower, or preferably a wood, or else it's going to be very uh, much a tight fit. Um, there is a, quite a heat sink on this uh, video card as well so it is good to have that extra room but it is what runs nt8 essentially a lot of the chart drawing is all done through DirectX, and a lot of it is going to be used for a video card i believe uh, that ninja trader 8 specs uh, for like their basic uh, versus are recommended uh, the video card does go up uh, putting something that is more of a a medium to high performance video card is probably going to make that experience much more pleasant for you. Uh, so that's why we went with the GTX uh, 1080 Ti. Okay, for monitors, you can spend a fortune on monitors. Um, I'm using uh, what they call Crossled uh, 34U100s. Uh, they are essentially a brand out of South Korea uh, that gets imported to the US. Um, they are using Samsung panels. So you're going to basically get a monitor that costs three times as much for about a third of the price but it's the exact same panel that's in them so that's why i went with them i like replacing monitors or at least having the ability to replace monitors when i want uh, so this way i'm not spending a ton of money on monitors where if i wanted to upgrade them later on um, but yeah they are dual uh, i have two of them 34 uh, u100 so they're 34 inches uh, widescreen and you can either put them one on top of each other or essentially um, I have them beside, so it would take up almost like your full desk, and I think they probably hang off the edge, the monitor frame part, maybe about two inches on either side, and that's just your standard width desk. So I would imagine um, you'd have the screen space that you require, but they also have a very thin bezel, and uh, that makes it really nice for when you're trading and you have charts flowing from one monitor to the other. So it, uh, it's quite nice uh, to use, and I've had no issues with them. So when all these parts show up at your door, it's not that intimidating to put them together. Um, you're just going to unpack everything and, and get everything kind of laid out. Uh, the easiest way to do this is you take your motherboard, you toss in the RAM, and then you toss in your uh, CPU into the socket. And you're pretty much ready to start assembling. So you put the motherboard in the case. And again, like I said, you can only line up the screw holes to screw in the motherboard into the case one way. So you can't really mess this up. Um, and then once your motherboard's in there, you have obviously your RAM and your CPU already in place. Uh, you can slide the hard drive in and uh, it just goes into the motherboard as well. 
And if you have one of them, it's really easy to do because there's a slot right for it. Uh, your second one is actually underneath the heat sink for the onboard graphics card. So you actually have to screw that out. So if you have two of them, you might want to put that in before you put the motherboard into the case. And then finally, you'll put your heat sink on and uh, you'll connect all your power cables and you're ready to start your system. So it's not that hard. You can see by looking at it, it's, it's relatively simple. Um, there's not a whole lot to it and uh, very few components at least these days compared to the the past now a lot of the wires also get hidden you see these little pockets and your cables just kind of stick through them and they run through the back side of the motherboard so um, i mean you can probably get this if you didn't know what you were doing probably together in a day um, and that's taking your time uh, that's kind of what i've been using and why i've picked the parts i did so hopefully you find it helpful um, if you have any questions on that or uh, if you want to know if I'm still using this machine, uh, by all means, ask away. Uh, I imagine this machine, honestly, would probably last me another couple of years before I start upgrading parts on it. Um, and even then, it's probably not even necessary. I could probably start overclocking before I use stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. So we'll do another video if we do upgrade anything. And if you have any questions on this or anything else, by all means, let me know. Don't forget uh, to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.